the triple C. I'm gonna make them bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really What's up, me. everybody? Welcome to this episode of That Track. We are going to be breaking down the 2024 NCAA Champions. I'm talking about the real rest mini. I'm talking about the real March Madness. I am here with a special collaboration. Yep, that's right. I'm talking about Wrestlers Grind. Over here, guys. You guys, introduce yourselves. I'm Adolfo. What's up? I'm the co-host, Hunter. Awesome, guys. Well, guys, for those who are watching, man, these guys, they eat, sleep, they ble they bleed wrestling. So on this episode of The Cave, we are breaking down, that's right, like I said before, the 2024 NCAA championships that are taking place this Thursday through Saturday to find out who is the best from 125 pounds all the way to 285. Well, let's get straight to it, guys. Enough talk at 125 pounds. Five pounds, guys. This weight class is stacked. Out of all these weight classes that I see, this is probably the most competitive. You know, you got you got you got Brendan Davis from Penn State. You got you got Drake Ayala who defeated him at number three. You got Matt Ramos who ended up beating Spencer Lee, having having one of the biggest upsets in NCAA history. I mean, looking at the brackets here, I mean, we could we could potentially be seeing the quarterfinals. You know, uh, Brendan Davis versus Richard Figueroa. Uh, we have number seven, Jacob Ch uh, Jacob Camacho versus Luke Stinch, if I'm if I'm pronouncing it right. Stinch, Stinch. Okay, excuse my friends. Wow, but looking at look, look, looking at the weight class now, if I can pick a, who is it that's going to come out of the quarterfinals? I'm sorry, to the semifinals at 125 pounds at the top side. More likely, we're probably going Brendan Davis because he's proven he's a hungry, he's a true freshman, he's been winning. And he just won the Big Tens. And on the bottom side, for me, guys, I like it all. But guess what? That Drake Ayala has a win over Brennan Davis. Pretty decisive. Very woody on his feet. Is trained by the Brands brothers. I can see both of those guys getting at it in the finals. Ooh, solid, man. 125 is just wild. So, anyway, you pick it, man. It could, it could happen. But I like your uh, prediction there. I do think that we... Uh, you know, you have two true freshmen right here at this weight class, the number one seed, Braden Davis, and number two seed, Luke Stanich. So it'd be pretty epic if we see two true freshmen in the finals. But I think it'll probably end up being uh, Braden Davis uh, versus Drake Aliyah in the finals. And I'm going to go with Drake winning it all. Damn, like that. Okay. Yeah, Triple C. I'm going to have to go a little, throw a little curveball in here. I'm going to go Matt Ramos versus Drake Ayala. He's got to, you know, he's got to capitalize on that win he had over Spencer Lee last year, and he's going to have to defeat another Hawkeye in the finals. So I'm going to go with Matt Ramos at 125. Damn, you guys, you guys are giving me the chills out here, man. You know what? At 125, I'm going Drake Ayala. I think, I think, I think if he's firing at all cylinders, he's super slick, and I think he could really upset some people. But moving on, guys, to 133 pounds, guys. 125 was probably the most competitive. 133 pounds is probably one of the most stacked. Why do I say that? Dayton Fix, junior world champ, four-time, three-time NCAA finalist, four-time NCAA All-American, five-time Big 12 champion. And obviously, we cannot forget about the 2023 world champion in Vito Arugia, but this weight class is absolutely stand. I mean, we, I mean, we got Ryan Crookham who had defeated, uh, who had def who already has wins over, you know, and, and it's crazy to say over a world champion and Arugia, you know, I mean, like, like a Dylan Sh uh, uh, Shaver who has that those crazy, those crazy duck unders. He just won the Big Tens. I mean, this weight class is absolutely freaking stacked. Evan Frost from Iowa State, you cannot forget about him. But looking at the whole matchup, who I think is more likely going to make it out the top, I'm going to have to say day in fix because of his experience. And this is, you know, fifth time is a charm. And rarely do you ever get anybody, anybody to get a pretty much a fifth chance. Actually, probably the only one, probably NCAA history. And this guy could potentially become, uh, for the first time, an NCAA champion. And on the bottom side, guys, I know Ryan Crookham has, has two uh, victories over Vito, but Vito has shined when the light is bright by becoming the world champion in 2023, you know, dominating the world championships in 23. This is a different style, though, from freestyle to folk style. But I can see day and fix 
and Vito Arusha in the finals. Now, who wins it all? I like them both. I follow them both. I'm a fan of both. But it's just hard to, to doubt, you know, the 2023 world champion in Vito Arusha. So for that reason, guys, I'm going for the big red, Vito Arusha. Wow. Solid pick there, Henry. And let me ask you first, have you got to train with Dayton? I thought I had seen that in the past. I have. I have. I trained with them uh, 2018. 2018 in Oklahoma State. John Smith freaking says, hey, Triple C. As I just got inducted to the Hall of Fame. He's like, hey, uh, what are you doing tomorrow at 3 o'clock? I'm thinking he's over here inviting me to a barbecue. And I'm like, nothing, John. He's like, why don't you strap on their shoes and uh, why don't you come out and wrestle Dane Fix? And dude, I just got a Dutch to Hall of Fame. The last thing I want to do is freaking wrestle. But you know what? I said, screw it, dude. That dude was taunting me, taunting me, taunting me. I put on my wrestling shoes, strapped it up, and we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, I think at the top side as well, I have uh, Dane Fix making it to the final fight. Hey, don't sleep on Dylan Shaver. He's uh, been impressive this season. Won the Big Ten uh, conference. It's a it's a tough one to win too. So, but I think Fix is going to make the finals, and he will probably face. Oh, I do see a semifinals between Vito Arruja and Ryan Crookham. You know, rumors going around that maybe Vito's a little banged up. You know, he's also getting his weight down for Olympic trials. But I don't want to bet against him but i just what i've seen and it is towards the end of the season man i think i'm gonna go with crookham making the finals and it's gonna be crookham versus fix and you know what i'm gonna pick crookham to win it all at 133 oh wow got pretty bold there adolf all right yeah and i i honestly think though if i think fix matches up better with crookham than Vito does uh, you know, they're gonna have to wrestle in the semis, as we said. If Vito and Fix wrestle in the finals, I think Vito's gonna get the job done. But you know, gotta root for Fix. He's going for you know, this is fifth time to the NCAA tournament. So I'm rooting for him. But shout out to Spartan Combat Athlete, uh Vito Rujau. Hope to see him uh avenge some of his losses to Crookham and get on the top of the podium. Oof. Okay, well, there we have it. Well, let's move on to 145 pounds. Obviously, this one. 41. I'm sorry, 141 pounds. Excuse my Francois. We have Jesse Bendis at number one, Bob Brown at number two. God, Lee, I'm looking at this weight class, bro, and I'm just like, dude, this might be the most competitive one. Real Woods at number three. Ryan Jack from NC State at number four. Anthony Echemendia from Iowa State, the Cuban Missile Crisis at number five. Austin Gomez, who just made the Olympic team at number six. We got uh, we got Kel Happel. Am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, and I, that might have been a typo on our side with having Austin Gomez there. Uh, I should have updated it, but he's at 49. Our apologies for that. Oh, okay. Fuck. All right. Well, that changes everything. So I was about Lachlan to McNeil Gomez. is a 60 at North Car- from North Carolina. All right, then we have uh, then we have you know number eight uh, Sadorsky from Iowa State. I mean this 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 weight class is absolutely stacked, dude. Uh, I'm I'm looking at. Uh, I think you guys might have messed up again, bro, because you guys have Iowa State twice. Casey Sadorsk, uh, Case Casey uh, Sadorsk six forty nine. Yeah, that is actually a mess up. My bad. I didn't even realize that. You gotta yep. stay. Away, oh. You gotta stay away from that crack. Or stay away from that beer. Whatever you guys are taking, but get oh, it right, we're just, fellas. We might not Anyhow. be as experts as we thought we were. No, but um, our apologies on that. But um, yeah, Sadurski's at forty nine. Yeah. So so uh, right right away. But the, looking at one hundred forty one pounds, I don't think it really matters because at the top bracket, you guys call me crazy. I think Jesse Mendes and I think Anthony Echemendia are going to be in the semifinals. I think on the bottom side. We're going to have Real Woods versus Bull Barlett. And I just feel that on the top side, the Echemendia might just edge it out, dude. There's something about his freestyle wrestling, his strength that he brings in there. And he's only gotten comfortable with more folk style. Well, yeah, he has take, he has lost to Real Woods. He has lost. I'm not sure if he competed against Jesse Mendes, but he has lost in folk style. But the dude's only getting better. And I believe 
that he wants to live that American dream. So I can see Echemendia in the finals versus, call me crazy, I'm going for Real Woods. I think Real Woods has that chip on his shoulder. He's being coached by Tom and Terry Browns. I think he's going to pull out the, you know, pull out the rabbit out the hat. And I can see both of those guys in the finals. Yeah, Henry, I really like your pick there with Echemendia. I think, I agree, man. I think he's going to beat Jesse Mendez. And I think we're going to actually see him wrestle Bo Bartlett. I really like Real Woods, but Bo Bartlett just looking great this season. Um, he's really hard to beat in, in the postseason. So I'm going to go with Echemendia versus Bartlett. And I think Echemendia is going to get it done. Like you said, man, if he can get into those freestyle positions, getting an upper body, you don't want to be there with him. You know, he's going to take you to your back. So I'm going to go with Echemendia. It's a tough one for me. Uh, you know, that top side, Jesse Menes is an animal. We saw him before even hitting college, placing third at the senior level in freestyle. I know it is a different style, but there's a lot of expectations for Jesse Mendez. And this year uh, going in from, you know, he's he bumped up or he went up a weight from going from 33 to 41. And he's uh he's looked uh, fantastic. He won CKLV and he's got, I think he'll face Echeminia in the semis. And that that is very an in, uh, interesting matchup. But I think uh, Mendes will make the finals. And then on the bottom side, I... I think it'll be a semis between Real Woods and Bo Barlett. And I want to see Real Woods get back in the final. So I'm going to have, it's going to be a Jesse Mendes versus a Real Woods with Mendes taking home the gold. Ooh, okay. I like it. I'm not mad at it, dude. I think Mendes, I think Mendes is a real deal. I remember watching him in high school. Uh, I know he's lost. He's wrestled a couple of our guys at Ballon with my brother. One of our guys had beaten it. Actually, a couple guys beat Jesse Mendes uh, from our club. But we've always, we always knew whenever it is that we had Jesse Mendes there that we're going to war. Either way, man, I can see. I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if a guy like Jesse Mendes wins it all, or I'm going for the top side. But I'm, I'm really kind of going for and I'm gunning for Eche Mendia to win it all. So. Move, moving, moving, moving off, guys. To 149 pounds, we got you know we obviously we got Ridge Lovett from Nebraska, who has been on a roll. But obviously, he just took an L to Kyle Parker from Arizona State. I mean, we got we got Jackson Arrington from NC State. You know, we got Caleb Henson from Virginia. I mean, we got Austin Gomez at number six, and then obviously we have uh, Casey Swidorski for the second time, guys. And uh, yes, I think I think the quarterfinals is going to be interesting, man. You know, with with you know a, a potential matchup between Lovett and Casey Sudorstick, Sudorsky, and then and then maybe in, and then Walters versus Henson on on the on the top side. Uh, on that side, though, on the top side, I can see Rich Lovett winning the top side, and on the bottom side, guys, it's either going to be Kyle Parko and Austin Gomez in the semis. But but for some reason, man, with Austin Gomez making that Olympic team and what he's been able to do lately, Austin Gomez is on fire. So for that reason, guys, I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with Austin Gomez winning the whole damn thing. Yeah, and I think we're gonna see. I mean, the top three contenders for this weight class are Ridge Lovett, Austin Gomez, and Kyle Parko. I agree. I would love to see Austin Gomez make a finals. You know, he's electric, he's exciting, he's an Olympian for uh, the Mexican team now. Uh, super excited to watch him compete in the Olympics, but, you know, man, at the end of the day, I think we're going to see Kyle Parko come out on top in this weight from Arizona State. Damn. Oof, I like it. Solid. Sun Devils, man. You know, I, I feel like a freaking backstabber for uh, for not going. <laughs> for not going for the rest of the guys, but moving on, guys. So 157 pounds. Obviously, we got Levi Hands. We got Levi Hands from Penn State, number one. We have Ja'Cory Teamer from Arizona State, number two. I mean, the list goes on, but at 157 pounds, guys, you know, that's one weight class. So I think it's on lock. I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with with Levi Haynes to win the top side. And obviously, Ja'Cory, Ja'Cory Teamer, who has been in wrestling for such a long time, super athletic. But if there's anybody that could possibly pull up the upset, the upset, I will say Ja'Cory Teamer. But, man, Levi Hens is too solid, bro. Like, he is too solid. His training partners, 
You know, he's got guys like, you know, Zane Rutherford as a training partner, Kyle Dake. I mean, the Zane train. I mean, uh, uh, God, he's he's got the he's, – he's, he's wrestling. He's in the weight class where he's an in-betweener, in-betweener from the Olympic weight from, you know, 63 kilos to 74. So he, he he's, he's in that weight class where he's able to fight or wrestle either one of them. And I think partially people don't give that credit, but you got to give credit to those damn training partners. He's getting every single fill, and he's super basic, but I can see him winning the whole damn thing. Yeah, that Penn State room, it's it's loaded from uh, you know top to bottom, and they're looking potentially to maybe break, uh, break the uh, NCAA record uh, for team points. I believe it's 170, and it's held by Iowa, if I'm uh, correct, but... Yeah, I do. I see the same thing, Henry. I think Levi Haynes comes out on on the top side, and I'm gonna throw a little twist here. I think uh, if he can pull it together, um, you know, he had a little trouble at the CKLV, but Meyer Shapiro from Cornell, he's slick, man. He's dangerous, and you know, Cornell known to have you know some really quality national champions, right? Yanni Diakamahalis, Kyle Dake. There's high expectations. Yanni talks high on him. Let's see if he can pull out, uh, you know, some victories here, make it to the final. So I, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna predict that Myra Shapiro makes the finals against Levi Haynes. But I think Levi Haynes might be a little too much, and he'll get the job done and get his first national title. Damn. Yeah, and I think. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think it's going to be Levi Haynes. You know, he's the type of guy. He can be a Bo Nickel, Vincenzo Joseph, um, David Taylor, those type of guys. So I really think if he stays on the offense, he's going to get it done. Yeah, it, it, he's too solid, man. If, if there's a lock on all of them, it might be him. Moving on, guys, 265 pounds. Keegan 02 at number one. You know, uh, Mitchell M- M- Missenbrick. Am I pronouncing it right, Adolf? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, from Penn State. Yep. Julian Ramirez from Cornell. David Carr, Iowa State. Dean Hamity, Wisconsin at number five. You know, number six, Mike, Mike Caliendo. I love that damn last name. I'd love to have that. From Iowa. Uh, you know, the, the list goes the list goes on, dude. But on the top side, I can see Keegan. Old, obviously, Keegan. Oof, these guys are going to be in the quarters, which is freaking crazy. Or more likely, I'm sorry, in the semis. I'm going to see, uh, you know, we're going to see Keegan, uh, Keegan O2 versus David Carr in the semi, which is absolutely crazy. And on the other side, you know, more than likely, we'll probably see Ramirez from Cornell versus uh, versus uh, Messenbrick in the semis. But if I had to, but if I had to pick who is this going to make it to, who's going to win the top, I'm going to have to go with number two, you know, Messenbrick. And dude, uh, Keegan O'Toole just watching his dominant performance against David Carr. Even though, even though I'm going for David Carr, I think Keegan O'Toole gets it done, man, and becomes a three-time NCAA champ. Yeah, I see this being a finals between Keegan O'Toole and uh, Mitchell Messenbrink. You know, both coming from the club of Ben Askren. People want to see it. Mitchell has. Uh, Really showing a lot of uh, progress throughout the season. Very dominant. He was originally at California Baptist, transferred over to Penn State, wanted to be challenged. So this is, I think, this is the match that everybody wants to see. And although people also wanted David Carr to be on the opposite side so that we could potentially see, you know, Keegan O'Toole and David Carr in the finals, but I think it will be Keegan O'Toole and, and Mitchell Messenbrink with, it's hard to bet against Keegan. So I'm going to go with Keegan winning another national title. Yeah. And, you know, I also think that if David Carr is going to beat Keegan O'Toole in the semis, he's got to keep his finishes quick and clean. If he starts getting into a scramble with Keegan O'Toole, he's been coming out on top of those scrambles in the past two matches. So um, love David Carr, but he's going to have a tough time with Keegan O'Toole. And then same thing for Messenbrink. You know, um, Messenbrink sometimes leaves himself open in scrambles, and uh, Keegan O'Toole, you just can't make that mistake against him. So I'm going to go with O'Toole winning it as well. Dude, there we have it. Okay, we we agree on this one, all of us, all in favor. Okay. 174 pounds. Mikai Lewis, Virginia Tech. K. K DeVos, 
from South Dakota, Edmund Roof, Illinois, and number four, Shane Griffith from Michigan. Okay, so Shane used to wrestle for Stanford, right? He's the one that he's the one that helped save the program. Yes, oh sir. Oh my god, sure dude, this one's this one's uh this one's freaking hard, man. But on the top side, God Lee, we got Car Carter Starachi, dude. Let's at number nine. So we're not even talking about him, but uh, you know, three time NCA champ. Going in for his fourth. I mean, could he potentially become the fourth and then potentially have another year to be the first fifth time NCAA champ? I mean, it's doable, but I think his injury at Big Tens tells me a lot, man. And he might still be injured when you get these guys that really want to go in there and take him out. Guys call me crazy, man, but I can see, I can see, I can see Shane Griffin make it in the top. Call me crazy. And at the bottom, I can see Edmund Ruth. But the guy who really takes it all, in my opinion, I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with Edmund Ruth, you know, by uh when when it is, I think he's athletic. I think he has fun. If you see him, he likes to dance, he's having fun with his wrestling. And I think the when you get guys like that that are around big crowds, like he's gonna go out there and he's literally gonna shine. So for that reason, at 174 pounds, guys, I am going for Edmund Ruth from Illinois. Yeah, and Triple C, you know, Makai Lewis saw this bracket and was just pissed. Like that, the fact that he had <laughs> Carter Sirachi on his side, I bet he was just like, oh, come on, man, again. But um, I think Carter Sirachi is going to beat Makai Lewis. I think we're going to end up seeing uh, Sirachi versus Edmund Ruth finals. Um, I'm going to give it to Sirachi. He hasn't given us any doubt, uh, any reason to doubt him. So I'm going to go with him and watch out for Rocco Welsh, though. He could definitely be a dark horse at 174. Wouldn't surprise me if he made the finals as well. Oof, I love it. Oof, well, are- I'm going to go. I think Sirachi, if he's on and able to wrestle today, uh, they had a little press conference and they, he said that he's ready to go, but I, you know, figures, right. He would say that he's healthy Oh, it's just tough. And Shane Griffith had a um, medical default in the finals, so he he didn't get to even wrestle. So he's banged up as well. I believe that happened in the semis. So, yeah, you got three NCAA champions on the top side. It's just so hard to bet against Carter Sirachi. Like, it really is. So I if, he, if all is well with him, I see him making it back to the finals, and I think that he will have a match with Edmund Ruth, and how crazy would that be? Because Edmund Ruth obviously is related to Ed Ed Ruth. His that's his brother. So little Penn State uh, relation there. But I think Carter Sirachi gets number four, and I'm excited to see what he says after when he wins. Maybe he announces that he's coming for number five, or he's just going straight into MMA. Do they give him? Do they give him the bag? Oh, you. I think you do. I don't know how much. But I would assume a good, good old McDonald's bag with money. Maybe a couple of them. Okay. All righty. That was a bit cringy, but uh, we'll take it. Oh, wow. money, right? Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Moving on, guys, at 184 pounds. Guys, I'm a bit stuck here. I think anybody can potentially win this because nobody really comes out to mind. But if there's somebody that does come to mind, then I feel like I could really surprise people and win the whole thing. I'm gonna have to go for I'm gonna have to go with TJ Stewart. I really do, man. I think he's a young, hungry, and he, you know, he's 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 done some amazing things this season. So the one that really pops out to mind at 184 pounds, anybody could win it, but I have to go with somebody and pick and take my pick. I'm going for TJ Stewart. Yeah, I like TJ Stewart as well, um, but I got to go with Parker Ketkaisen. I think his all-time record is 72-5, and five, something like that, and he's um, he's gotten third, third, second at the NCAA tournament. So I think this is the year he'll finally get it done. And, you know, looking for a Parker Ketkaisen versus TJ Stewart or Isaiah Salazar, maybe, man, you might even have to throw Bernie in there as well, Bernie Truex from Penn State. Um, but I got Ketkaisen getting the job done. What do you yeah. got? Who do you got, Adolf? Man, we we went out to the Big Twelve tournament, and we've seen you know Parker also compete at the collegiate duels. And I'll tell you what, seeing these college wrestlers live in person, it really changes your perspective. And 
man, every single time I've seen Parker, I'm just like, dude, that that dude's a beast. And uh, he's gone from third, third to second at the NCAA tournament. And it's just so hard to bet against him. He's a guy that's doesn't get the respect that he deserves, right? He's getting a little, uh, you know, Aaron Brooks was at his weight, 184, won that. So he was just, just not getting the shine. But I think he's uh, more than capable of winning this weight. And I'm not even going to talk about the other guys because I think Parker's got it all. So that's my pick to win 184. Oof. Okay. I love it. So moving on, guys, at 197 pounds. I mean, we have Aaron Brooks from Penn State, Trin Headley from NC State. We got Tanner Solan from South Dakota State. And Michael Beer from Lehigh. I mean, right here, man. Look, looking at this weight class, I just it, it, to me, it's a lock for Aaron Brooks, and he, I, I, I want to say he's going to become the the fifth uh, NC, the fifth four time NCA champ. I think Aaron Brooks, when he's when you're going up against guys like like David Taylor in the room every single day, when you become a world team member and an alternate. I mean, you're talking about this guy's part of this guy is part of a, a club that uh that is just second to none, man. Ultimately, like if I could, if I if I could take my return back in 2012, and I was already talking to Kelly, he was super excited to have me. I would have gone to Penn State. I mean, the coaching, the training partners that he has there are absolutely second to none. So for that reason, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are going to see the fifth four-time NCAA champ. So I'm going all in. I'm betting the house on Aaron Brooks. Yeah, and it really is kind of like um, Kale versus Daniel Cormier. You know, uh, Trent Hidley being Daniel Cormier in this scenario. Any other year, Trent Hidley probably have a really good shot to win it. Unfortunately, got Aaron Brooks. I don't think any of us disagree. He's going to win it all, and he'll probably get uh, the Hodge Trophy as well. Damn, I like that. You're right. I mean... There's no reason why you you wouldn't, but if he does get upset, guys, how crazy is that? It happened yeah. last year with Spencer Lee. No, I, I agree. It's, hey, uh, hey, 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 so real quick, guys. So Spencer Lee still had a year in eligibility if he decided to come back this year and become a four-timer, right? No, he did not. No, I believe why he... Uh, why, why does Dayton fix... Oh, because I think he, I think for the COVID year, he he had redshirted, right? Yeah, you know COVID. Happened? It's it COVID year, and then the Olympic redshirt, and then redshirt year. So I, he he played it right. How, however, he did it. it; it worked out well for him. So yeah, he he did take an Olympic redshirt at some point. Yeah, so that's how that's working out for him. And like you just said, Henry, like we saw that we're in a. Great time for wrestling. Last year at NCAs, we had two three timers going for number four. This year, the same thing, but this time it's for Penn State. Penn State has yet to have a four time NCAA champion with all the records that they have, all the champions. You got David Taylor, Ed Ruth, uh, just an, a crazy number of guys that are just fantastic wrestlers, but they have yet to do it. And when you think of like, hey, is it if you could only pick one guy to win it uh, out of the two, I just feel like Aaron is a little bit more of a solid pick, especially when you know that Carter's a little bit banged up. Uh, but yeah, with this uh, weight class at 197, I do think without a doubt, like Aaron's going to get it done. But it's just Trent too. He's got they're they're both coming up for 184, so they're eating good, lifting heavy. It's I think it's going to be a different match than. The years that uh, we saw them compete at 184, but I, I just I just don't see Aaron Brooks getting knocked off. Damn. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Well, moving on, dude, to you know the heavyweight division, 285 pounds. You the know, big boys. Got, yeah, we got the big boys, man. We got Craig Ker. You guys have to pronounce him with that damn last name. Kirk Vliet. Kirk Vili from Penn State versus Yongar Bastida from Iowa State. I mean, we got White Henderson from the Air Force, Colton Schultz from Arizona State, Nathan Tyler from Lehigh, number five. I mean, this weight class is absolutely stacked, dude. You know, we have uh, obviously, I think the top side, uh, Greg's been on a roll. 
I mean, you're talking about, again, I go back to Penn State and all the training partners that he has, from Kyle Snyder to, to you know, to Jake Varner as a coach, to Kel Sanderson. I guarantee you, Kel still gets dirty with these dudes and probably beats them all. That's how good Kel Sanderson is, bro. I've seen that dude in the room. Woof! And I've heard stories of him mop whopping with, you know, with current Olympic champion. But I ain't saying he ain't hear it from me. He's that good. But I can I can see I can see Penn State winning the top, and uh, at the bottom at I like I like Bastida from Iowa State, the Cuban Missile Crisis. I can see him, the trolling and everything he's doing at number two. And if I had to predict a winner at heavyweight, guys, I am going with the Cuban Missile Crisis. I think his throws, his unpredictability, and I go back to him and you know seizing the moment, loving the fans. You know, creating all this fan base and just wanting it all. I can see him. I can see. I can see Iowa State having two champions at the NCAA champions. Call me crazy. Yeah, and younger Bastida, man, he's been looking great all season. I think he's only had like four points scored on him, offensive points. So, you know, I think he's going to get it done on the bottom side of the bracket. I think he's going to uh, face Kirk Vliet in the finals, and it's really a toss up there. You know, um, I don't really know if uh, Kirk Vliet is – I haven't seen him in person. Younger's big. I know Kirk Vliet. He's about 265, so I think it's going to be a good matchup. Uh, both powerful, fast, strong dudes. So I think um, Younger Bastida is going to want to attack low on Kirk Vliet to get the job done. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a finals between Gray, Kirk Vliet, and uh, Younger Bastida. I just really impressed by what I've seen from Younger. He was cutting a bunch of weight at 97, didn't get to All American last season. So this offseason just focused on getting bigger, better, and he's looked fantastic. Undefeated, has defeated some of the top heavyweights in the country. I think, uh, but Greg, he's the real deal, right? He's had uh, some really quality wins throughout his career. A guy. That was preventing him from winning a national title. Gable Stevenson is no longer here. And there was conversation at one point that Gable was going to come back. And how wild would that have been if he was in this weight class? But he's not. So it leaves it open to someone else getting the crown. And I think it's uh, Greg's time to get uh, the title. Okay, so you're going Penn State. Hey, just to kind of follow up on that. Gable Stevenson couldn't compete because the WWE didn't allow him. Is that what it is? That's what we're hearing. Yeah. See, that's ah, golly, man. Gable. I would have loved to see him wrestle the NCAs, and I would have loved to have seen him wrestle, wrestle, wrestle at the Olympics, dude. But whatever, man. Like he's, you know, hopefully he makes it in the WWE. Hopefully he becomes a damn superstar. Because if he doesn't, he's gonna kick himself in the arse. But that being said, guys, obviously. What's your take on that, Henry? On uh, because you're you're someone that's done it all, right? You've an Olympic champ. You went over to the UFC, got the money, got the titles. Would you? What What do you think Gable should do in his position? Should he have stayed in college, uh, got the NIL money, then continued wrestling? You know how it is with money and wrestling. But I think with his name, he probably could have got a nice bag. Maybe not what he's getting now. But what what do you think his path should have been? Um, his path maybe sign with the WWE, still, like put him on lock, like have a guaranteed contract. But in the contract, I would have says, "Hey, if I opt out to try to make an Olympic team or wrestle with the NTAs, like you should have the ability to do that." But it's it's unfortunate because the W the WWE would have always been there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, once I didn't make that Olympic team in 2012, like, I knew that I didn't want to wrestle no more. But guess what? I wasn't done competing. You guys see this back here? You guys see this back here? You guys see all this gold? Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> I have you another uh, random question for you, Henry. Um, you know, the 20, 125 weight class, 133 weight class, if you could pick – you know, a few guys that you would enjoy wrestling with, competing with, who who would those people be? Um, that I could see potentially maybe making a transition to MMA, or are you got to be a little more in depth with with that question, Adolf. Like, if you were going to wrestle them in a wrestling match, who do you think would give you a good scrap? 
Oof, that's good, man. Let me see. At 125. At 125. Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. The current, the current, the current stats right now, huh? That what you got the okay. I think the guy that would probably give me it would have to be somebody lanky at 25 and somebody that could top ride really good. Depends on the style. But I could tell you this at 125, I think I'd eat him. I think I eat him alive. Everybody at 133, man, obviously Arusha. I've used his, Arusha's ability and his length and all that. I think that would be a crazy matchup between me and him. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a chance to kind of wrestle with Dame Fix. we got similar styles. Uh, but, yeah, I think somebody at like Arusha would be would be, would be would be an awesome match. And at 125, you know, I, I, would, I would say Drake Ayala. You know, slick on his feet. You know, c- comes from the same culture, comes from the same lineage from from Iowa. I think those are two matches that would be that would be super super good. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, last question: If you could wrestle anywhere today, out of all the schools, where would you go? And if it couldn't be Penn State, where would you go as well? So, like a a, a and B type question there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd probably be Iowa. You know, I think I'd probably end up going with going with uh, Kel, quite honestly, because uh, you know Kel was recruiting me back in the day. He saw a lot of potential in me, and he actually taught me my Olympic finals move that I ended up hitting at the Olympic finals. And people, a lot of people don't know that. You know, I, was, I went and trained for, for with Kel for about a week, and he taught me one thing, and then boom, and then he texted me he was like, "Hey, man," he says, "You're a sponge." You know, he's your sponge. I think if I would have, I think after Terry Brass, I think I was getting ready to make that graduation and. Maybe kind of go off and tra- training and new techniques and a new philosophy. I would have loved to have trained with with Kel, but if it's not Kel, I would definitely be back with Terry Brands. For sure. And uh, Henry, I love the the Cejudo C steer. Pull yourself yeah. into the double leg. I love yeah. that one. So yeah, we've yeah, seen that's... that a bunch. <laughs> I appreciate that, guys. But just to wrap it up, guys. Who wins the NCAA trophy? Will Penn State have it on lock? Will they break the most points ever scored at the NCAA finals? And who is this going to be at number two, three? And we'll just throw a wrench out there. Who's going to be at number four? Go ahead, Adolph. Well, I'm going to cause some drama, right? You know, you, Iowa State has looked fantastic. I think they're coming home with a trophy. And uh, me and Hunter were talking about, you know, this season they dueled and People were thinking that Iowa State, you know, it's been a long time since they've knocked off Iowa, but they didn't get the job done. But I thought, how crazy would it be if they placed ahead of uh, of uh, ahead of Iowa at the NCAA tournament? So I'm going to say they get second. And then for third, Iowa. And then for fourth, I'm going to go NC State. Yeah, I got one Penn State, obviously. Second, I'm going to go Iowa State. Third, Iowa. And four, I'm going to go Cornell. Ooh, that's pretty good, Hunter. I like that. All right. So and I did one, mean I'm- Penn State as number one, by the way. I don't know if I said that, but okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, join the bad wagon. Join the bad wagon, Adolph. I got Penn State at number one. Number two, I'm going to have to go with Hunter. And I'm going to have to say Iowa State. I mean, what Dresser's been doing, especially if Echevendia – and Bastida can turn it around and become champions. I think that's a lock for number two. And at number three, I'm going to have to go with the Hawkeyes. And number four, I think Michigan's going to end up bringing that fourth place trophy. What? Which I, I take that back. Uh, they're no longer giving that. Uh, there's a bunch of cuts. They're no longer giving that fourth place trophy. But that being said, guys, the NCAA's. I wish I was there. I won't join you guys live so we can talk about it. We we could have probably been podcasting live with you guys about the NCAAs. But that being said, the NCAAs are taking place this tomorrow, this Thursday through Saturday to decide who is it, the, who's the best of the best in university, in Division One. And I'm super excited. A lot of talent. A lot of wrestlers are more likely after this year probably going to transition into mixed martial arts. A lot of wrestlers are going to end up winning the NCAAs, are going to end up trying to make an Olympic team. And I'm just super stoked, guys. I'm a little jolly with you guys. But that being said, that being said, guys, what are your last two words over here? Oh, man. It's been uh, a pleasure uh, talking with you, Henry. We appreciate it. Uh, you've done a lot of great things for the sport of wrestling. 
Uh, I think it's great that you're trying to cover more of the sport, break it down. Uh, that's what we need in wrestling. People with l large platforms talking about the biggest stars because our sport has given us so much, right? Um, you know, that's why we do what we do just to, uh, you know, shine the, the hardest, the hardest sport out there. And so it's been a pleasure getting to talk to you. And, uh, we, we look forward to one day heading down to Arizona and hanging out and, uh, Maybe get a little bit of training in. Alrighty. Yes, sir. Shout out Triple C. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with uh, a good luck to Younger Bastida and uh, Anthony Etchemendia. They're they're those guys. So shout out to them. I'm gonna close with that. Damn, there you go. I'm, I'm with you, Hunter. Well, I'm your host, Heather Sudo, aka Triple C. And I just did a collaboration with Wrestlers Grind. You guys make sure to follow them, subscribe to them. You know, they love wrestling. They know it's more of a team than Triple C. At least folks start wrestling. But till next time, guys, and we are out. <laughs>